I think he's a very good player. I think he was signed at a time when Man United were looking for something. Welcome to One to One with Simon Jordan. Thank you for all your compliments on my clobber. Of course, if you're comparing it to Jim White, it's an easy sell. Don't forget to keep leaving your questions in the comment sections below, and most importantly, to like and subscribe. The most well-run club in the Premier League is, depends, like the old saying, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, depends which way you're looking at what is a well-run club. You could argue Brighton is a well-run club. You could argue Leicester's a well-run club. You could say, really, Liverpool is arguably the best club in the Premier League for being well-run because it ticks all the boxes from how they spend their money on players. And out of the top six managers in the Premier League, Klopp has returned the least amount of spend to acquire the points they've achieved over the last four or five years, whether you're going against Conte or previously on a Solskjaer or you're looking at any other top four or five managers. So Liverpool, from a performance point of view, from a financial point of view, from a positioning in the football pyramid point of view, so I would probably say Liverpool, but then again, if you look at other clubs, you can make an argument for Manchester City because of the pure, purity of their football. I don't like that argument because I think the economics that come into play with Man City don't make them, in inverted commas, the best run club. You could say Burnley, because people would say Burnley haven't been, you know, have no right to be an established Premier League club if there is such a thing. So it really does depend on how you want to look and what you think the best run club is. Three years ago, it could have been Tottenham. Record, record profits, new stadium being built, wonderful training ground, players coming through the academy, players being brought from down the pyramid, England captain, wage controls, everything in place, Champions League finals, roll forward three years, horror story in terms of performance on the pitch. So it all depends upon which moment in time you're looking at it and what, what you judge is, is the way that a well-run football club should be. Is it winning? Is it competing? Is it punching above its weight? Is it financial success? Is it all of the above? If I was living in a parallel universe where Palace got those sort of choices where you could choose from Tuchel or Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp, I probably would go towards Thomas Tuchel because I think he's got the chops for the league. I, I very much like this latest sort of soliloquy from him about Christensen and his contract and not being prepared to perhaps sign a contract and maybe he should walk like he talks in terms of his commitment to Chelsea. So I think Tuchel, I'm a great admirer of Klopp's, I'm a great admirer of Pep Guardiola, I do think Guardiola is a checkbook manager. Without doubt he's a great manager, but I think he needs a checkbook there. So arguably does Tuchel, but it's something about Tuchel that turns a team that was a mixture of all its parts into a cohesive unit in six months, win a Champions League, and the manner in which he engages with the media and the manner in which his Chelsea team is performing would give me the feeling that if I could have a Tommy Tuchel managing Crystal Palace when I was there, I might have been quite happy. Ballon d'Or, losing its resonance. I think it is because I think we see so much football and we see it so regularly and reliably and through every single medium. But notwithstanding that, it goes back through the passage of history. You know, you go back to the 50s when it first arrived on the scene and you see the great winners. You go to 1968 when Georgie Best won it after they won the, uh, what was the European Cup final. It starts to lose its resonance, and of course it starts to lose its resonance when the same people keep winning it, and arguably, maybe this time round, the same people that have won it previously didn't necessarily merit that win. Lionel Messi, of course we all know what he's done, where he's been, and how he's done it. Right? But when you get into the territory of perhaps Lewandowski doing things that are so exceptional that he cannot not have won it in the year that it wasn't awarded, and arguably should have won it this year, you start to look at it and go, are these awards all they're cracked up to be? Do they have the same sort of credibility? So for me, I look back and over the years and the PFA awards dinners that give player of the year or the football writers, and I used to grow up listening to those things, they've lost, they've lost their resonance. And I think the Ballon d'Or is just a little bit show busy and flashy for cashy. Players obviously like it, but I don't think it has the same substance as it used to have. I don't necessarily think it has the same integrity either. It might sound as if it's a, a little bit facetious or unnecessarily ironic, 
I'm not an admirer of Fernandes. I think he's a very good player. I think he was signed at a time when Man United were looking for something and, and he fulfilled it. I, I've steadfastly watched him get seemingly more and more full of his own importance. Now, I've been quite consistent about Pogba because I think he's flattered to deceive. I think you should call people out when they don't do it. And I think also over the last year, when Fernandes and the arguments being made about him not turning up in big games and possibly having a lot to say for himself, I've made that argument repeatedly. So any allegation that I handled Pogba one way, insofar as anyone cares, handled Pogba one way and Fernandes the other, isn't true. I, I, I disliked intensely the claptrap that Fernandes did when United got smashed to pieces by Watford and all that nonsense behind the manager's back. And I think his performances of late have been very poor. And I think there is a real argument to suggest that when it counts in the big games, like the, you know, the Europa League final, conspicuous in his absence. So I hold him to the same way that I hold Pogba. But Pogba comes with a World Cup winner's medal, a, a mythology about him, uh, that how great he was at Juventus and how great he was in that side when he was afforded that luxury by players that sat alongside him. Whereas Fernandes was a surprise package. And whilst he's not a surprise package anymore, now I judge him by the same standards that I judge Pogba by. I love my boxing and I particularly like Tyson Fury. I'm also an admirer of John Fury. I wouldn't want to live next door to me, but the simple fact of the matter is, from a boxing point of view, they bring good value. Now, John Fury spoke brilliantly after Tyson had demolished Deontay Wilder for the third time. And some of this stuff that comes out of people's mouths in press junkets are designed to be controversial and outspoken. I think he took it a little bit too far. I think he diminished himself because if you listen to John Fury, he really does know about boxing and he really does know, obviously, about his own sons. For me, I don't like the idea of the Fury name being associated with this version of boxing, i.e. the Jake Pauls of the world and all that goes with that. I'm a bit of a purist. I understand the YouTubers have a space and place. And I also think that John Fury doesn't need to lower himself to that level to be able to talk and take the conversation to the vernacular in that way. Um, do I, do, does it need to be sanctioned? Does it give Eddie Hearn an opportunity to be a little bit more smug and a little bit more supercilious about Fury? Possibly it does. The fight game is better for the commentary that John Fury brings. The fight game is infinitely better for Tyson Fury being a world champion. But that's, that sort of rhetoric, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a little bit over crude. And John probably looks back at it now going, yeah, I know I'm a fighting man, but that wasn't necessary. So that's it for this week. Don't forget to let me know, let me know your views on Bruno, the Ballon d'Or and Conti. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well and leave your questions in the comment sections for next week's show.